Our verse today is Acts chapter 7, verse 60. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Our verse comes from the stoning of Stephen and the last words that he uttered before he died. While they were stoning Stephen, he acted like Jesus. In verse 59, he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Remember the words of Jesus on the cross, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Jesus was quoting Psalm 31, verse 5. In this case, Stephen commends his life into the hands of Jesus, for whom he is offering his life. While Jesus called on his father, Stephen calls on Jesus. He is obeying the command of Jesus that everyone must go through Jesus to the father. Stephen cannot call God his father the same way Jesus calls God his father. Jesus is the natural son of God. Therefore, Stephen has to call on God through Jesus. And that is the way Jesus has asked us to pray, to call on God his father through him. Through the name of Jesus, we reach God our father. In our verse, Stephen once again acted like Jesus. All his actions in this verse reflect what Jesus thought and did during his life and passion. First, falling to his knees. To fall on one's knees is a gesture of prayer. In his agony in the garden, Jesus knelt and prayed, calling on his Father. Here Stephen falls to his knees. He prays just as Jesus did in the garden of Gethsemane, Luke chapter 22 verse 41. Second, crying out with a loud voice. Jesus on the cross cried out to his Father in a loud voice, twice. On the first occasion, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. And on the second occasion, he cried out and gave up his spirit. Matthew 27, verse 50. In the same way, Stephen cried out to Jesus. His cry was one asking God for mercy on his executioners. And that leads us to the third point, not holding their sins against them. Jesus taught and preached forgiveness of enemies. He also asks his followers to pray for those who persecute them. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. Jesus lived it out by praying for his executioners. Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Stephen is now following the footsteps of his master, doing the same thing, praying for those who were killing him. And finally, falling asleep. Falling asleep was an idiom for death. Read Daniel chapter 12 verse 2, John chapter 11 verse 11, and Acts chapter 13 verse 36. St. Paul gives a detailed explanation of falling asleep in his first letter to the Corinthians chapter 15. Those who die in Christ only fall asleep to wake to a new life in the kingdom of God. Stephen stands out as an example of following and living out the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lives. What do we learn from this verse? First, when we face persecution, we must turn to the Lord in prayer. Let's not take the laws into our hands. Second, we must pray for the conversion of those who treat us badly rather than pray for them to die. Stephen prayed for those who were persecuting him. And finally, we must develop a consciousness that our death in this life opens up a new page for us in the kingdom of God. Hence, we must be careful what we say and how we treat people. Stephen loved his persecutors and executioners to the very end. Even when they were killing him, he still loved them and prayed for their forgiveness and conversion. Lord Jesus, do not hold the sins of those who have hurt us against them. Give us the courage to forgive and let go. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day.